May God bless all of you, and not just you, but everyone who is part of your life, whether at home, at work, in school, on the street, may you be the light wherever you go. And this is the mission that we all have. When we are chosen by God, when we are one in the Lord, one spirit with the Lord, when we are married to Him, I mean, when we have a covenant with Him, when this happens, it's because we've been chosen, chosen. And this is the greatest wealth that a human being can have in their life. I don't exchange this wealth for absolutely anything in this world. No other wealth, nothing, absolutely nothing. This is my greatest wealth to have been chosen by God. Jesus says that. He said like this, You did not choose me. But I chose you. This is very nice. I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Which means that wherever we go, we have to bear fruit. Fruit. The fruit are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, He makes us exude and manifest the fruit. First is love, but not the love that the world talks and sings and talks about. No, nothing like that. The love of God is so great, so great, so immense that His love is expressed in one word, one word, which is to give. When we love, we give. So this is the first fruit, to give. So Jesus says, I chose you that you should go and bear fruit, that you may love. But how to love? Well, to love is to give to your neighbor what God has given us. This is love. This is true love. What we do here daily is exactly that, is to give to you what God has given me. I feel that I have this obligation, but it's an obligation that gives me pleasure. It's out of love. It's not because I am like this, that I was born like this. No, but because the spirit of love is in me. And this spirit wants to be in you as well, if it's not yet. And through you, He wants you to bear much fruit. And then He says like this. This is very nice. If the world hates you, if people of the world, people who are not the light that I want them to be, people who are not a blessing that I would like them to be, if they, if they hate you, you know that it hated me before 
it hated you. This means that if they hate, if they hate our Lord, how much more will they hate His servants? If they hate the Lord, who is the Lord of all things, of all that exists, the eternal Lord, then let alone His servants. But He says, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, remember, I already spoke about this, those who are of God, those who are married to God, those who are one spirit with the Lord, these ones are not of the world. They are extraterrestrial. He says, if you were of the world, we are not of the world, then the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. And when I read this text here, right now, I've, I remember my mother. My mother, whenever I would go to the kitchen, my mother was preparing either lunch or dinner, and she was always at the table, and sitting down, she would spread the grains of beans, and she would choose. The good ones she would put on the side. The bad ones she would throw in the bin. She would choose. She would see and choose the best grain of beans. And that's why her beans and rice, wow, are something divine. And so are we. God chooses. He chooses us. And if He doesn't choose, then if He wasn't chosen, then that's it. Then what can be done? When He chooses, a person who has been chosen knows that they were chosen. They have this understanding. And because they have this understanding, they obey. They try to give what they have received to others. So Jesus has chosen us in order for us to bear fruit wherever we go. In other words, Jesus chose us in order for us to be a fountain of blessings in this world. So that wherever we go, we will then bless those who are there and who want, who have been chosen by Him as well. Therefore, dear friends, this is the great reality, the great truth. We didn't choose the Lord. It was the Lord who chose us. And this is great. How do I know, Bishop, if I've been chosen? How do I know? Look, there's only one way. It's when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. When you are sealed, another way to say it, when you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Do you know what it means to be sealed? It's a stamp of, of property. So, when the Lord chooses us, He seals us. He marks us in such a way that there is no doubt inside of us. It doesn't matter what the world says, what people say. It doesn't matter what people think, say, and etc. It doesn't matter. None of these matters. People's opinions doesn't matter. Literally, it won't matter at all. No one's opinion matters. Why? Because we know that we have been chosen. We know. We have this assurance that God has chosen us. And this, the Apostle Paul also said, he also teaches that. According to the Holy Spirit, of course, he says, the Holy Spirit bears witness. He confirms. 
He confirms that you are His. The Holy Spirit confirms within us that we are children of God. Children of God. Born not of the flesh, not of the water, not of the blood, but of the will of God. So, it's He, God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who chooses us. And when a person is chosen, they bear fruit. They bear fruit. It's what Jesus said. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, and that your fruit should remain. And then he says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Do you know why the world hates us? Do you know why we are despised, rejected by the world? Do you know why? You know why we are rejected? We are, let's say, defamed and so on. Do you know why? Because the world is envious of us. The world is envious. But the world is in the hands of the devil. And what can we do about it? It's not my fault. It's not my fault that I've been chosen. He chose me, and, and, and that's it. If anybody wants to complain, complain to him. Same thing with you, dear friend. You are chosen. Then, praise God. So it's worth to be hated, defamed, wronged, slandered. It's worth to be beaten up and even die for him. Because... He is our glory. He is our wealth. He is what the world cannot have. The world cannot have Him. That's why we are hated, defamed. We are envied and so on and so forth. But praise God. Praise God. This is very good, very good. This is the joy. You know when you find the right person for you? You know, when you finally find someone who matches, who fits you perfectly, and you become the happiest human being on earth. Isn't it like that? Very well. This happens when we are chosen by God. We, wow, we've been chosen, chosen by Him. And this is the glory, the wealth of human beings. And this we shall carry for all eternity. Praise God. May the Holy Spirit enlighten your understanding. May the Holy Spirit finally call you. Of course, I, I see it this way. When you are bothered by, by the voice of God and His calling, I remember that I met Jesus at the age of 19, but two years before that, I would hear about him. I heard his word, and I had accepted him, but I hadn't married him. In the church, I accepted him, but outside of the church, when I would leave, I would also leave him in the church and carry on with my life according to my own principles and will. 
However, his voice would speak to me. His voice would always speak until one day when I hit rock bottom, then I had no other option. I said, here I am, Lord. And then it happened. So perhaps, dear friends, you are being bothered by this voice. The Holy Spirit chose you and He is speaking. Leave this behind. Leave that behind. Do this. Do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. And this voice is throbbing in your conscience. And you know what you need to do. You don't have to ask anyone. Because the Holy Spirit, when He speaks, He leaves no room for doubt. He's very clear. The only thing that you need to do is to obey. As long as you don't obey, you are going to continue suffering. And He cannot do anything. He is stretching out His hands, but you are not holding on to His hands. So what can He do? Will you wait until you hit rock bottom in order for you to cry out to Him? Well, dear friends, each one has to have their own experience with Him. But when He chooses, His voice is strong inside of us. We may deny it. We may say, oh, not now, wait a bit more. I'm too young, I have so much to do, I want to live my life. When He speaks, it bothers. As long as we don't say, here I am, we suffer. But after suffering and groaning a lot and we can't stand the pain anymore, then we end up saying, here I am, Lord. And then He's waiting. It's nice that He's patient. He's long-suffering. He's merciful. And He knows whom He chooses with perfection. So, if you are being invaded by this strong voice inside of you, in your conscience, don't take long, don't delay, go quickly, run to Him, give your life, don't waste any more time, because as long as you don't give, you are going to be wasting time, you are going to be like a dog running after its tail, walk in circle, your life is not going to move forward. So, surrender once and for all and see what He will do in your life. Perhaps right now, you are willing to surrender, to give your life to Him. You truly want to do that. You say, Bishop, I'm ready. I want to give my life to Him now. If you want to do it right now, then Wherever you are, if you can, get on your knees, perhaps go to the toilet, close the door. No one will bother you there. Put your knees on the floor, your elbows on top of the toilet seat, and let us pray together right now. Amen? Do this now, in the name of the Lord Jesus. You can go there, so we can pray together in order for you to give your life, to surrender yourself. I will help you in this prayer now. Let us unite our faith, mine and yours, and let's give our lives to the Lord Jesus. My Father, my God, my King and Lord, you said that it wasn't us who chose you, but you chose us. You chose us. I think, I believe, my father, that this person who is now in the middle of the night, seeking, praying, crying out, asking, longing, 
for your spirit. I believe that they are ready. You see the effort they are making. They are battling to have an encounter with you. So, Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you who compels us to seek the Lord Jesus, it's you who guide us, who speak, who convince us. So, right now, in this moment, come upon this person, my Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may they receive right now the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul, when he received some of the disciples who had been baptized in the baptism of John the Baptist, they had heard about Jesus and they were baptized in water but they still didn't have the Holy Spirit. And he asked them, he asked those disciples, have you received the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, Master, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. That's the reality, my father. And straight away, the apostle placed his hands upon them and they received the Holy Spirit. My Father, I can't lay hands on this person right now for them to receive you, but I know that you are here, Lord Jesus, and I pray that you may place your hands on this person's head and fill them with you, with the Holy Spirit, in order for them to remain in order for them to go and bear much fruit and for their fruit to remain forever. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask you and I thank you, my Father. Receive now, dear friends, the Holy Spirit, there where you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and praise God. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen.